So welcome everybody to our first episode of Heinrich Böll Stiftung's new series Bridges, Encounters on Migration and Asylum in Europe. Today we'll start with a very timely topic asking, forced to flee, but where to? Europe, Greece and those displaced in Afghanistan, from Afghanistan. My name is Neda Nureykia. I'm honored and delighted to welcome today's guest. Uh, Ms. Parvona Amiri and Mr. Stelios Kolobru. Parvona Amiri is a human rights activist, author and poet from Afghanistan, currently residing in Rizona camp in Greece. Parvona recently wrote and published her first book, My Pen Won't Break But Borders Will, about her experience of the Moria Reception Center on the Greek island of Lesbos, which we probably all know, which burned down in 2020. And she currently is writing her next book about life as a refugee um, in Rizona camp, Letters from Rizona. Mr. Stelios Kolorlu is a designated member of the European Parliament on behalf of Syriza since 2015. Prior to that, he worked as a journalist, writer. Um, he um, made documentaries as a director and he served as political an analyst and columnist for Greek as well as for international media. Um, he's been described by the international media watchdog reporters without borders as um, the symbol of investigative journalism in Greece for a long time. So I find it quite interesting that we seem to have two investigative um, writers here with us today. Um, I really like this fact. So. Um, uh, and also important, uh, Mr. Kologlu is a member of the Committee on Foreign Affairs and in this capacity um, he is involved in questions of um, migration and um, asylum as well. So a warm welcome to both of you. I'm really happy to have you here for this topic. Um, I mean, we've all seen the dramatic pictures, the recent seizure of the Taliban um, in Afghanistan, the seizure of power. Um, after 20 years of NATO engagement and a very abrupt uh, end of the mission. Um, I'm sure there's a lot to talk about when it comes to Afghanistan nowadays, but today we really want to focus on um, the situation of those forced to flee, those displaced, and um, try and be brief um, half an hour um, to see where where we can um, how we can shed some light on some some pending questions. So um, I would like to start with you, Parvona. I know you're in touch with family and friends back home in Afghanistan. Can you try and give us an idea on um, their current situation? Um, how safe are they? Are they um, forced to flee home? And if so, where to? I can't hear you. Yes. Thank you very much, Yaneda, for giving me this opportunity to talk and to uh, describe more in details about the condition in Afghanistan. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Silius, for accepting uh, to have me in these discussions and uh, giving me this chance to talk to you directly. Uh, something that I have been always asking uh, in my letters and something that all refugees are uh, thinking to have a right and to speak with the politicians since they are making uh, legislations about their life. About your, about your question, um, Mrs. Neda, uh, currently the condition in Afghanistan is getting worse and worse and people are becoming more, more disappointed every day. My sister is there and some of my relatives, most of our relatives are there. Uh, my friends that they were, uh, you know, that they were, that they have already started their universities are telling that the universities are totally closed. And only the, in Kabul city that it has started uh, just today, there is, uh, there are many restrictions about uh, the education part in the, uh, in the universities. And the first one was to have poor things among the boys and girls and they shouldn't, you know, they should be careful and, 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 and sent, in case that there will be uh, such kind of, uh, you know, uh, like uh, any ki any kind of uh, action that may you know disrespect their legislation, so to say, uh, they will uh, you know keep the universities closed uh, for as long as they want. 
The second point about the uh, fan share that you know, uh, last night there was a big uh, fight among both groups and uh, the, the movement of people and also um, the, the Taliban's. And unfortunately, in the center, they are close to the center of fan share. However, the speaker man of the, uh, you know, uh, the, um, the, the, uh, movement of the people were telling that it is not uh, it was their plan in order to have in the center of taliban has uh, they did uh, they did uh, before in order to have them in the center and attack on them directly but uh, it is not only about friendship, so to say, because you know that in many of the in many of part of the Afghanistan is under colony of uh, uh, Taliban's. Um, and recently, you know, what makes the conditions uh, much worse is that there is no government at all, of course. And uh, the you know less work, less opportunity for work. The um, you know the men that they don't come, they they are not able to come out. And there's a big risk of having, uh, you know, attack and bomb explosion in any part. Uh, all these cases make people to be afraid of coming out and to continue their work. And it is the same about women. They don't work at all and they're all at home. The economy is really, you know, it is uh, in a very terrible way. It has decreased. Um, and uh, many of those, uh, many of my uh, friends and uh, their, their relatives that they were trying to pass the border, they say that uh, internal borders of Afghanistan is under, um, uh, you know, uh, the Taliban are all around and they are not able to even pass the internal borders. They cannot uh, cross from one city, one province to another province because uh, when they wanted to pass the border of Pakistan, they had to pass, uh, uh, you know, border the cities and they cannot, uh, you know, cross from one city to another other city. This is the same about those that they are now in Iran and they are trying to pass to Turkey and the same about the, those that they wanted to pass to Turkey and come to Greece and because none of this, uh, you know, points that they are passing is not safe for them and they face with many uh, problems as you know, as you may uh, know better about uh, the condition both in Iran and Turkey for refugees. So uh, for many of them there is no way uh, to stay and no way to escape. Uh, because in both in both cases uh, there is a big risk. There is a big risk of death and uh, life. And those even that they are in the Kabul airport, the, there is no plan for them. They have been waiting uh, for a long time. Even they many of them lost it. You know they lost their families. They, they but the, it is a you know they are facing in a. Uh, uh, condition that none of the members of families are thinking about another member and everybody is trying to risk their own life because there's, this is the only uh, possibility, this is the only way. Uh, those that they state, they have, uh, they, you know, they have no idea how their life is going to be changed and those they are, that they are trying and they are close to the borders, they don't have any idea how to cross the border. I think, you know, Afghanistan is facing a very terrible catastrophe. And uh, it is also very heartbroken that, uh, uh, the, you know, there is less attention, less care, and less, uh, you know, plan for uh, the way that the, they, they can risk the people in, life, in danger, those that they are in exile, and they are uh, mainly, uh, you know, th those group of people that the Taliban are seeking for and they are tr trying to find them. Uh, but we can clearly see that there are less plans, there are less uh, ways, and there is less uh, attention on the condition that is, and uh, everything is happening in, in Afghanistan. It is highlighted in the media, but in the action, with action, we can see less. Thank you very much um, for this, yeah, very dark picture you, you painted that is absolutely understandable. Um, you, you mentioned the, the reaction of, um, of Europe and its member states, and I would like to hand over to, to Mr. Kuroru asking, um, I've seen online that you recently asked some questions to the High Representative of the Commission, um, and in fact already asking what measures um, are there to ensure the smooth arrival of refugees and their protection and also a proportionate um, distribution um, between the member states and the European Union. Um, and I found it very interesting to end and would, and I think the question was not answered yet, right? Um, but still you might have some hints after um, the last days 
um, and weeks whether there is any plan yet or how your question might be answered eventually by the Commission. This would be really interesting, I think, to all of us. Well, uh, there, there, is no, there, there is no common answer. There is no common policy. And here we are again uh, in the era that every country, almost every country, every member state of the European Union, uh, tries to avoid the problem uh, in which the country itself contribute to make. Uh, you know, because um, what we have now is that uh, uh, after the, uh, the, the defeat of the United States uh, uh, and the withdrawal of the troops, uh, when the, the troops enter uh, 20 years ago, in 2001, the uh, um, United States were not alone. There were other countries. Uh, the, the coalition of the willing, they, they entered also uh, Afghanistan. And uh, now they, they, are, uh, they created finally a mess. Uh, they, were, uh, uh, they were forced to withdraw, but they are not taking any kind of uh, political or moral responsibility uh, uh, for their um, uh, for for what they they did. That's the uh, that's the problem. So in uh, uh, this concern, uh, almost uh, every country there is no uh, there is no common uh, answer. Not an answer based on the humanitarian values and on the, on the and the, the values of the European Union itself. Uh, we have some good exceptions, like the president of Italy, for instance, that said uh, that uh, we have to, to accept uh, uh, the refugees and we have to, uh, to adopt a, a humanistic uh, uh, approach, but this is rather an exception than the rule. There's been a meeting last uh, uh, week uh, of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of different uh, uh, countries, they, they said no, 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 no. We have to. Uh, what we have to do, to do is to give some more uh, uh, money to the country's neighbour in Afghanistan in order to keep the the refugees there. You know, the idea of the European Union has for the this world is that every money can uh, solve everything, which is not the case, of course. Uh, because there, there are other things in life than, uh, than um, uh, spending and giving money. Uh, uh, my, the government of my country as well, it's on the same uh, tune. Uh, they are prepared, uh, they are kind of uh, preparing a, a very hard uh, legislation for the people that would uh, offer um, hospitality for the refugees if they come. There is a propaganda machine that says that uh, uh, 2,000, uh, 2 million, up to 2 million people, they will, uh, 2 million refugees, uh, they will attack uh, uh, the borders of Greece, which is uh, uh, nonsense, makes no sense. It's, it's completely uh, out of proportion and it's pure propaganda. And they are spreading fear into the population uh, that uh, an enemy is coming. Uh, that, that, that's the situation right now, but I can also tell you what uh, we're planning uh, in my political group, the left, but uh, what I'm also planning to propose in the, in the left and the Committee of Foreign Affairs uh, for tackling the uh, problem. Thanks a lot. You both mentioned so many interesting aspects I'd like to, um, I'd like to connect to and follow up on. Um, one is the, um, still as you mentioned, the propaganda machine. Um, I also have the impression that uh, there is a very specific um, way things are reported and debated in mainstream, um, let's say, mainstream discussions. I was wondering, this two million refugees that uh, potentially would attack, um, in how far does the situation uh, beginning February, March 2020, when the Evros region um, was in, you know, escalated, in how far are 
um, is the current debate in Greece related to these events? Um, I would like to ask both of you and um, do you think, I mean, how, how realistic are such scenarios anyways? Parvana, you mentioned that people, I found it quite impressive, um, the sentence that people cannot even cross internal borders, like inner Afghan borders, not to say cross the borders that are on the way to Europe. Um, so I would like to hear both of your opinion on um, how realistic are these fears and um, yeah, and, and I mean, how, how um, much does it have to do with reality or is it rather something related to events in the past? Um, Parvani, you can also, from your personal experience, do you feel, you, you've been in Greece for a couple of years, do you feel or vit witness a change in uh, perception or discussion? Thank you. Uh, you know, first of all, it is very hard for the families to leave their house, leave their work, leave whatever they have uh, they have tried to have in their life and to leave everything and, you know, suddenly, uh, you know, uh, with all the family to cross the border. And that is really real that it's not uh, possible even to pass the internal borders of Afghanistan, not to think, not to speak about the external borders. Uh, when I was in, uh, you know, for the first time we arrived in, in Greece after uh, having five attempts from border of, uh, from, you know, Turkish border and uh, the sea and to come to the Greece in 2019, the condition was very different. It was really different than uh, what is it now. I think it was much easier at that time than now. It is really hard, you know. There is almost, you know, a very a very low percentage of having possibility to pass the border. And there are many families that they are uh, really trying to do that in any possible case, but it is really hard. And currently, the problem is that all the countries that refugees pass in order to, you know, arrive in Europe, all of them are not safe in many different ways to, to, the, to those people. Um, otherwise, no refugee is uh, really willing to pass the border again and again and to risk life, uh, um, you know, everything but passing borders. Uh, but currently, even the condition in Turkey is really, is really hard. It is, in many cases, it is very difficult for them to leave the there. Because as you know, Turkey doesn't have the asylum system for the refugees and it is not the uh, refugees are, are not registered and there is no system for them, uh, no support at all. And uh, the, recently that even Erdogan, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan also declared that uh, Turkey is not a safe country for uh, refugees come from uh, Afghanistan. And of course they don't readmit the, the ones that they, uh, you know, get uh, de deported, legal deported uh, from, uh, uh, from, uh, from Greece. And, uh, you know, there isn't law that says uh, approving Turkey as an unsafe country is one of the most highlighted reasons that many of the many of the people, they don't even stay in Greece and they really don't want to stay in Greece anymore and they are trying to enter the center of Europe. And uh, from the January, uh, sorry, from uh, June 2021, uh, this year, uh, the number of people passing the border and trying to center, to pass the center of Europe is getting more. Uh, about last week, if I'm not mistaken, some members of uh, parliament from, uh, sorry, the minister of uh, um, migration from Bosnia, he came here and he was, uh, uh, when I gave some information about the reason that, uh, you know, now recently there are more people that they are, uh, you know, uh, is stuck in the in Bosnia's border and that why there are more people coming it was shocking for him because he didn't know the reason that uh, families are coming from Greece there uh, but uh, recently getting rejection like many of the families are getting rejection from Turkey and they are really afraid of getting deported from Turkey and as you know there is no safety for them because Turkey can easily deport them back to Afghanistan they have done it several times and uh, mm, even, you know, even they are much more willing than being in Afghanistan rather than being in Turkey, because there is no chance and they have to stay, uh, they have to live in a hidden way because they don't have the documents. There is no, uh, you know, readmission, the registration for them. There is no right for any basic aspects of uh, um, rights for them. So this is like the change. I think this, uh, the chain of legal, illegal um, passing of borders uh, is going to be continued unless there will be a fair and equal system. And uh, really, you know, 
our covered uh, system for all the countries that refugees, for instance, in Afghanistan, passing borders and stay. Otherwise, it will be continued like this. And of course, recently that uh, uh, Greece has uh, uh, got made a stronger um, walls against uh, the, for the border, not uh, for the refugees easily to pass. Uh, it made the condition much worse. And even we have some cases that the families, they lost their fam they, they, they lost the other members of their family in this border. And really, it's still, they don't have any news. Thank you, Parvana. Stelius, you want to add? Uh, well, uh, you know, the, uh, what, what I have to say is that uh, uh, this uh, propaganda machine is taking completely things uh, out of proportion. Uh, the, the aim is to, to scare people. Um, and this creates, uh, with the government's approval, uh, an ambiance, a situation uh, where it's becoming uh, uh, more and more difficult to uh, host refugees and more and more difficult for the refugees to come. Uh, it's a kind of witch hunt, you know, like the, like the Middle Ages. Uh, the recently Amal came, uh, you know the doll Amal, uh, a, a doll for a kind of symbol. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a doll, you know, uh, uh, going different uh, countries, um, crossing eight uh, uh, countries from Syria to Great Britain. But when it, it, uh, uh, the doll arrived in, in, in Greece, it was uh, treated like a, a witch. Uh, like the, in the Middle Ages, we have to stop the witch. And if they had, uh, the, you know, they, they just, they throw stones and... Uh, and, and uh, different uh, th objects uh, on a crowd uh, of young uh, pupils of young people. They, they, they were, uh, they, they were uh, marching together uh, with uh, Amal, with uh, the doll, you know. Um, and uh, so they, they, they were uh, ready, uh, there are people ready to lynch uh, the doll. And if you want to lead a doll, they were saying unbelievable things. They were saying that uh, the doll is uh, um, uh, is Muslim. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, um, <laughs> it's uh, surrealistic things. They, they were saying that uh, you know the, the 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 doll is kind of uh, vegetarian uh, concerning the food. Uh, you know the. Uh, uh, things unbelievable. The, uh, the 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 minds of the of the terrified people are constructed. That's the idea. Uh, so, uh, but but still, uh, 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 and uh, I'm really uh, uh, afraid that the, the same of uh, uh, Moria will be repeated uh, in Greece or in other countries. It doesn't matter. But also, it's the same for Greece. Uh, Moria stuff, and uh, uh, so we have to give a uh, and uh, a European answer, and uh, this is what uh, I I'm working for. Okay, let me directly follow up on that. Um, um, can I add something? Sure. Um, I know you know that in uh, September 2020, exactly a year ago, when the fire in Moria happened, many of the European politicians were saying no more Morias. But uh, the recent detention center that is called Mauruni Reception Center is even much worse. And if you're getting, sorry, just a minute. Uh, but the recent detention center that's called Mauroni Reception Center is even much worse. But the problem is, and the difference is that uh, if you are getting less voices coming out of those camps, that, that doesn't mean that the condition is better, but people are living under more oppression and they're really a, a, afraid of raising their voice. Uh, 
they there are many people from the those even the refugees that were working with the NGOs and maybe you got the news in 2020 it was really loud that many of them were under attack of local local people and I think this is not about the system but it is about the informations that are getting separated among from the media uh, about refugees and about uh, the reason that they are fleeing the country. And I know even without, it, before the condition in Afghanistan get highlighted in the media, many of people were calling refugees as economic migrants because the information were less, uh, you know, separated among, among people. And it was really hard for them to, you know, consider and have a good perspective about the, the you know, a uh, huge number of people coming from there. So also you um, you you pointed out that uh, uh, this is like the European should have an answer about uh, about about this uh, number uh, number about this uh, wave of uh, people and should have an answer about it. I think it is uh, uh, you know European um, member states they should first consider about those that they have already risked their life and they passed. Uh, uh, the country and they are now here rather than deporting, you know, making a system to have them uh, legally deported back to the country they have already passed, for instance, in Turkey. So if we cannot feel the safety and we have to uh, pass the borders again and again in order to find a safe, uh, find that uh, safety. Uh, so what can be the consideration about those that they are in Afghanistan? I don't think if it can make sense that the ones that they are already here and they have been here for two or three years to be back to Afghanistan and after that for another for other people to find a solution for those that they are behind borders. Because a lot of number of people are getting uh, rejection, they are getting they are in a, in the red line of being deported, and most of them are passing the border of Greece and they are trying to find their way in the center of Europe. Uh, what kind of danger they are uh, they are facing uh, if they go back to Turkey? No, no, to from Turkey to Afghanistan. From Turkey to Afghanistan. If they are expelled from Turkey, yes. Uh, of you of, know on... clearly about the condition of Afghanistan. So if they will be back to Afghanistan. If they don't have any house, if they don't have any shelter there, if there is no place uh, accommodation for them at all, if there is uh, even those that they are uh, in Afghanistan, they didn't flee, they didn't lose their uh, house, their accommodation. So they they are also facing danger and they are also facing being risk in risk. How can we expect the safety for those that they flee and they were in another country for two or two, three years and to be back to an, a country that is in the middle of war and violence? Thank you very much also for this add-on and I think also for the aspect of um, I th there are uh, people who already left Afghanistan pro some of them years ago and are stuck somewhere on their way to a safe haven somewhere in the European Union so it's really important to also shed a light on their um, fate and as important as it is, um, we've recently discussed a lot the fate of those who are still in the country and discussed also a lot among the EU how to protect those um, that are still there. Um, we've seen discussions on um, evacuations, um, but nevertheless we have um, people who already fled Afghanistan and are definitely stuck in Greece in some difficult conditions, but also all along the, the way, um, as you mentioned, in Bosnia, um, for example. So this is really important to, to focus on when we talk about a European solution. It's not just about those arriving now, and it's not just about those who did not leave the, their country yet, but it's really also about giving a secure and a proper, um, well, offering a solution to those who are already within our union. Um, just a last question from my side, and then I would open up the floor to both of you to ask each other. Um, but I would really like to focus a little bit on this, um, what can be done 
kind of uh, question. Um, Stelis, you already mentioned the EU has to find a common solution. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on that. And um, I mean, this year we are celebrating, or not celebrating, but there we have the 70th anniversary of the um, signing of the refugee, the 1951 Refugee Convention. So it's not just about, um, you know, a, a human gesture, something we are also talking about international law when it comes to protecting those that are clearly um, in need um, of protection. And I feel like this is something that is being sometimes being forgotten in all the discussions. So um, to look into the future or to, to have a bit of a, let's say, um, engaging um, outlook, what could be done from your point of view, uh, whether on a member state, um, whether from EU member states, but also, I mean, we have had the um, various cities within the European Union um, engaging and, and showing solidarity with Afghan people, you know, being welcoming, Eurocities network, um, many mayors, like, you know, big cities such as London or Bonn or Barcelona had shown solidarity. What about this local level? Maybe this is um, a potential way to go. Um, what could be um, a way forward from your point of view? Uh, well, the, the cities could be an idea. The, the local authorities, uh, uh, usually are much more open and progressive than the, uh, the, the central state power. But uh, it depends also on the city. For instance, in Greece, I'm not waiting uh, such, a, such, a, such a position. Uh, if we consider that the mayor is, uh, uh, is uh, appointing uh, extreme uh, right uh, uh, people to different uh, posts of the local administration. Um, in Thessaloniki, for instance, if, uh, uh, I don't know what the, the actual mayor uh, could do, but the previous major, 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 uh, major could, could do better things, but um, he's out of office right now. Um, uh, on the level of the member states, what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, working on is a proposal. Uh, I will first uh, propose it to the uh, political group of the left, of the left where I'm belonging, and then to the uh, foreign committee of the European Parliament uh, in order to adopt it by the Parliament itself. The idea is very simple, it follows. Uh, we, we will have a number of uh, refugees uh, uh, from Afghanistan coming, for sure. And now, uh, then there will be a, an endless uh, uh, conflict uh, and uh, debate uh, uh, about the how many, how many, if any, uh, refugees every uh, country uh, could uh, host and accept. Uh, so what what I'm uh, proposing uh, is that. Uh, uh, there are countries, uh, as I said, they were together in the United States invading Afghanistan in 2001. Every country that belonged to, uh, to, to, this, to that coalition uh, uh, has a moral and political responsibility for what happened. They created a mess and now people are leaving the country. So, uh, according, uh, I have a very um, simple criteria uh, for how many refugees each country like this should accept. And this is the, uh, the criteria of, uh, of uh, the uh, armed forces they sent to Afghanistan in 2001 and the years uh, after that. So um, if, for instance, uh, the Poland uh, sent uh, 10,000 uh, soldiers, and 10,000 soldiers is uh, one tenth uh, or one twentieth of the uh, of the, the whole army. Uh, it went there, so uh, Poland has to take the one tenth or the one twentieth of uh, uh, the the of the number of refugees. Uh, so every country uh, to to take its own responsibility, not to have conflicts, etc. Uh, this is a, a proposal I'm uh, working on, 
uh, and this is what, what I'm going to uh, to propose. And of course, that uh, the European Union as a whole, uh, since uh, it it, uh, it was involved in the Afghanistan uh, uh, fiasco, uh, it has to take its own moral and uh, political responsibilities, which is not uh, only a matter of uh, sending some money to Pakistan or Iran. That's the, that's the proposal. Thank you, Silvios Caravana. I think you point out already, uh, you know, it is, uh, I really cannot find it uh, logical to have, uh, to get uh, refugees from the, from Afghanistan, uh, while the plan was to have uh, such a condition uh, and to make such a destination for Afghanistan. Uh, mainly, I think uh, currently what is going on in Greece is also something, uh, some, something I like to well. Uh, I think the other member of uh, the other member states are not uh, really aware of the condition that is currently happening in uh, the condition of refugees currently in Greece, and that's why after having them, you know, uh, when they pass the uh, borders in another uh, country, they cannot really understand the reason that they are passing it. Um, also, because it is lack of information, it has been always lack of information among people. And this is that makes also misunderstanding in the uh, local communities. Um, and uh, as you mentioned, having uh, you, sending money is not, uh, uh, it doesn't really make sense on uh, to the neighborhoods and especially to Pakistan and Iran, not at all, because they have never been uh, really direct and real to uh, on what uh, they promise and what they may do. And uh, it can be the same thing on the northern uh, neighborhoods of Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Turkmenistan. Uh, so, and it is also, of course, it's not hard, easy because uh, um, we are in an emergency condition. Everything is uh, really like, it is like we, we cannot, we can, you don't have really time. We don't have really time. Everything is happening daily and each hour is count. As a refugee who has been uh, for three years in Greece, um, I cannot expect many actions be done by the uh, Greek state because even the information that could be separated from uh, real, you know, real information about the condition of refugees has never been uh, shared in the, uh, to, the, to the media. And that's why we have been always uh, highlighted in a, uh, with a different group, like called uh, uh, having another name on uh, on this uh, to, to, uh, to to ourselves on this during this journey, but uh, sharing responsibilities can be a, one of the solutions. Asking for a common actions can can be a, a can be a solution, and uh, really being in uh, agreement and being in deal with the countries that refugees are getting sent is important. Turkey doesn't accept the number of refugees getting deported to Turkey, but uh, Greece is directly rejecting them and get, giving them the, the deportation uh, papers. And I think in the current condition, deportation can be one of the biggest uh, uh, humanitarian crimes. Thank you very much. We're running out of time. Um, I could ask you so many more questions, but I would really like to open up the floor to both of you. And if you want, you can just ask each other a final question and um, then we would have to wrap up. So the floor is yours. Um, no, I, I just wanted to, to ask uh, Miss Amin uh, uh, what she hopes for. Uh, what are, what, what she's hoping for. Uh, what she wants to do in the life, what she, uh, how uh, she sees the future. That's very interesting. I'm following her work as a writer. Uh, is astonishing. It's very nice. Uh, and uh, but I think um, he she she hopes doing something more than staying in a camp in Richona and writing books. Uh, that, that's my question. I would like to ask. I think. 
um, you, you relaxed a very important and highlightable question. You know, Mr. Celius, I'm not the only young person who is doing all these things. I'm not only also an exception. I am not unique among uh, thousands of refugees and young people. They are so passionate and they are doing their best. In the first step, struggling with the condition, with their mental health, struggling with the with their psychological problems, struggling with all the situation, with the laws and legislations that every day is getting changed, and trying to keep their hope and to, you know, try to tolerate this unbearable condition that every day make their every our everyday life harder i'm not the only one i am i could be a bit more uh, my voice could be a bit you know raised uh, louder because of uh, you know telling about condition directly without having a fear of uh, getting threatened but believe me there are many people that they are so talented they are so passionate but they don't have a chance they haven't gotten any chance to have you know to show their talent even having the right for education has been always has been a struggle for us the schools are started but for camp in Ritsona and other many other camps we haven't been in school and many of us we could be the last year after waiting for a year and a half we could be in the school only for one month and we haven't started the school, and every year we have to start the school later than the normal student, not normal children. Mr. Stelius, education should be a basic right for each child who comes in Europe, being a European or a refugee, but it should be right for them, not uh, a struggle for them to protest. But I had to protest for three times in order to raise this voice in okay. the and to, in order to be discussed in the European Parliament uh, uh, about, uh, from some, uh, from one of the, from, from Green Party of uh, Germany. It, it shouldn't be like this, but, uh, but I, I mean, I think I'm happy for being in a camp because I can raise voice of a camp. I can raise voice of 3,000 uh, refugees inside of the camp. Um, but if you don't get direct voice of the refugees, does it mean that they don't have their voice, they are not able to speak, they are not able to express themselves, but they are mainly afraid of raising this voice, raising, uh, you know, spreading information, and that's so hard not to give them a voice, not to, you know, give them this chance to speak. I'm very happy to have this chance to speak to you directly. You know how many of us are always telling that uh, those who are making legislations and laws on us, uh, what can be if we can talk to them directly and to explain about conditions in a uh, direct way rather than having links always and uh, being represented in the media and uh, all the time. But uh, also, um, my dream is to see all refugees out of the camp living in a like uh, normal people with normal community with a local community in the same having the same rights and being treated in the same way and not to have camps that are separating people in many ways not only physically but mentally psychologically and ideologically in many uh, and in, in many different ways um the, the camps that are constructed in order to put refugees inside is not only making them being, be, you know, becoming uh, uh, ignored and not uh, really um, heard and seen, but also it makes life for refugees in many different ways really hard every day. Uh, and if you, if, when I talked about uh, n not being able to go to school, one of the problems was that we didn't have transportation way. And if we don't have transportation, that, that, we, that means our relation and our connection with the local people is cut. And we don't know what kind of informations are getting separated in the local community about refugees. Thank you very much. Sorry, you wanted to say something? Yeah. You know that, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, Europe believes that young people are the next generation of Europe, but do you think the refugees can be also the next generation of Europe and they can be uh, called as EU next generation? And do you think the same rights that is given to the young people, the young uh, uh, EU generation can be given to refugees as well? Of course. 
Of course, all in European countries uh, should have welcomed the refugees. They need them. Uh, they, they, are, they are facing a huge demo, uh, demographic problem. This is the practical thing. And the other thing is that we, we are uh, all human beings. We have no difference between, there are no other people superior and other people inferior. So every, uh, ev every person has a need that need must be uh, addressed by uh, according to the international laws and to the humanitarian laws and to the values of the European uh, Union. Thank you so much, both of you. Thank you, Caravana Amiri. Thank you, Stanley Kuroko, for this um, very enlightening first session of our Bridges um, Encounters on Migration and Asylum in, in Europe. Um, we could do this um, for many more hours, I'm sure, but um, we have to end for today. And I'm really looking forward to stay in touch with both of you and uh, to further continue our debate. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye.